Father God, I thank you so much for the day. Just the sunshine is absolutely beautiful after this time of rain. Uh, Lord, I'm looking around right now, and, and the building is full, and that's a blessing. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm so thankful. I pray that our hearts will be full. I pray that everybody here is here to worship you and glorify you. I pray that you are pleased with what goes on this morning. God, if there's anybody here who's not saved, not sure of their salvation, I pray that today would be the day that they get settled. God, may you be with us now as we worship you. May you just move in the preaching. Would you please touch our preacher? And uh, may he just be hid behind your cross and let your words just flow through him. Lord, I'm asking you to touch our hearts this morning. God, you are amazing. We love you. In your holy name, amen. Brother Jay Williamson, how we love you, buddy. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, they've been working on me, trying to get me to do this, that, and the other. So I figured this might be the easiest thing of all. I took it. And I say, if I cannot do it for another five years. <laughs> um, is there any new visitors here? Uh, so over here, you. you got There's the some new right people here, here. here as well. Some in the back and the overflow. I'm glad to see all you folks build this place. building. That's wonderful. And uh, love to see you all. And uh, I hope everybody is comfortable and yeah. can deal with this preaching. <laughs> Crazy preacher. <laughs> Love you all. Amen. Say hi to somebody. Shake some hands. Shake some hands. Hand. 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 Yeah. 
Just on the chorus. Okay, I want to hear you guys. Right. Acapella, you say? Acapella. 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 Acapulco. All right. Without, without the instruments. Here we go. Ready? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look. I mean, and, and now we do. And it's just exciting. Exciting to hear you. I wish, I know some of you in the back are like, I wonder what he's talking about. You need to come up here and sit on the front row. <laughs> and that way you get to hear. <laughs> See, there are certain perks to sitting in the front. <laughs> you just come in. You know what I'm saying, don't you get You can hear it all from up here, kids. Oh, man, it's gorgeous. All right. Hey, dear ones, I got something special for you. Miss Robin, where are you? And Mr. Richard, come on up here. We've got some nice things to do here this morning. Miss Robin, you go ahead and grab this mic and tell us all about it. Come up, if you will, right away. And what we're going to do is, right now, the Pats of Pirate group is going to tell you some things that are going on. And they're also going to give away some awards. Go ahead there, Miss Robin. The first thing I want to say is I want to thank all the parents for bringing your children to Patch Club. Yeah. Um, the children are doing amazing. We are in our fifth week. Amen. Amen. And I am so excited. I had promised the children that I had special awards for them because they are doing fantastic. Um, the first awards that I have for them is the Patch the Pirate Club member. These are all the children that are in Patch Club. <laughs> the first award goes to Julia Seacrest. Hey, Julie. Good job, Julie. The next one, Rochelle Seacrest. Oh, wow. Yeah. The oldest and the youngest, Seacrest. The next one, Camden Millman. Yay! And I hope I say this child's name right, Bryant Van Pelt. Yes, that's right. Way to go, Bryant. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> The next one is Logan Galetto. Way to go, Logan. Uh, the next one, I don't see her, uh, Peyton Smith. Peyton Smith. Can't remember. Huh? Oh, that's right. They, listen, what happened is he had uh, something come up. You had to go to the airport, actually. Yeah, it's... Uh, some some emergency took place. Sorry the next, the next one is Olivia Millman. Hey, Olivia! This one goes to Remus Smith. Yes, he also is. Yeah, I uh, think the family just couldn't make it because of that emergency. Anila yeah. Cannon. Anila, yeah. Yeah, she was. Oh, that's true, yeah. Danny Dyer. Dyer, yeah. <laughs> Woo, Danny! Good girl. Reagan O'Day. <laughs> Way to go, Reagan. 
J.D. O'Day. Mr. Reagan. Mr. J.D. <laughs> Emma Engelman. Alice Engelman. They were supposed to be here, but what happened? Oh, she got sick. I believe his, his name is pronounced Jedaliah Wallace. Is he here? I see. All right. Kalia Green. I had two visitors in my uh, class. Um, his name is Aaron. You can say Aaron Pate? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. And another visitor I had was Aubrey Washington. Way to go, Aubrey. I had some special awards too for the uh, for the sailors. Um, Olivia Millman, I chose you for Sailor of the Month of June. Amen. Olivia, good. Now this next student, what amazed me with her is her, her ability and also her display of a servant's heart for God. That is Anila Cannon. Yes, good. This next student should come to no surprise. I gave it as a Christian character, Julia Seacrest. Hey, Julie. Good, Julie. Way to go. And this little one, she amazes me. This little one, every verse that I had, she was one of my first ones that would raise her hand. My questions that I would ask her, she knew the answers. And um, the Bible Memory Verses Award goes to Rochelle Seacrest. We also yeah. had um, a contest for the kids to earn coins, gems, and for bringing their Bible, they got extra points for that. I am very proud to say I had four first place winners. The first one, Camden Millman with 90 points. What's up with that, man? Wow. Good job, bro. Way to go. The first place winner of, of 90 points, Rochelle Seacrest. Ah, good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and my next one, another first place, 90 points, Olivia Hello. Millman. <laughs> and my fourth first place, Julia Seacrest with 90 points. Wow. This next um, student, he received second place with 75 points, Brian Van Pelt. Awesome, man. And this little guy, I'm very, very proud. I'm all proud of all of them. Um, he came in, he was third place with 65 points, Logan Galetto. Wow, Logan! <laughs> Woo! And who do you think you are, man? <laughs> Unreal. Now, I don't know what I would do without the crew that I had. I have some amazing team members. Sissy Seal. Sissy! Daisy Dolphin. Yeah, 
Are, are you Daisy? You're Daisy? No. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's not Daisy, you guys. He's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> and I don't see her. Andrea Hastings with Sarah Siegel. Yeah. Okay. And Allie Alligator. That is perfect right there, yeah. <laughs> and this person is my right-hand person, my right-hand man. He's been there. He's helped me with everything. As most of you know, I've had dental surgery. And uh, Captain Rich. Captain <laughs> Richard! <laughs> Woo! All right, get them hats out. The first, Sorry. the first one goes to Anila Cannon. My coffee cup. <laughs> Olivia Millman. Wow, Anila, this is so cool. Julia Seacrest. Wow. Rochelle Seacrest. Hey, show everybody those. Look, look at that. Look at that, guys. Isn't that the cool Camden thing? Millman. <laughs> Brian Van Pelt. There you go. <laughs> Logan Galetto. <laughs> oh, man. Danny Dreyer. Dyer. And there's two more. It's Peyton and Remus Smith. They also oh, yeah. got Yeah, they're, they're on that trip. Right. Amen. Thank you so much, you give guys. All the sailors a yeah, round. give them. <laughs> this is Robin Pinkine, and she's the director of everything. And I think we ought to thank God for her, don't you? <laughs> thank you. Watch this, watch this film, watch this film. Oh, I've taken a um, spiritual gifts inventory. What is a spiritual? It's scary. Uh, the spiritual gifts inventory is a, a list of questions or statements that helps you figure out what your spiritual gift is. Every Christian has a spiritual gift that God gave to them. Oh, speaking of gifts, I have I have your gift for the birthday party to take to the birthday party. All right, because we don't want to forget. What birthday party? The birthday party you're going to. Remember? Oh, right. I get to get a present. Right. Susie's mom's going to come by and, and get you to go to the birthday party, and you got to have your gift when you go. Wait, I get my own gift. Yeah, you get your own gift to take to the party. Oh, speaking of which, it's probably time. We better go see if she's there. All right, come on. I don't think you need your baby doll, but you do need your gift. All right, come on. Oh, thanks for bringing her. Thank you. All right, bye yeah, bye. we'll see you Sunday. Bye bye. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah? Very good. Oh, what do you have here? That is a lovely bag. I wonder if it comes in any other colors. Oh, so nice. Look at what you got. Mmm, modeling clay. Oh, is this for me? No, it's no. mine. Oh, it's okay. This is for me. Bubbles. This is for my brother and me. Outside. Yeah. This is for me. Larp. Yeah. Noisy putty. Mmm. Mm. Oh, it's got a princess on it. Yeah, we have a princess party. Princess party. Very nice. That's nice. Wait. Here, hold that. What else do you have in here? Rochelle. Why do you still have your present? Oh, you gave it to me. Oh, but Rochelle, this gift was for Allie. You said it's what? It was my present. Well, it's your present. I gave it to you to give to Allie for her birthday because it was her birthday party. But I thought it was for me. You thought it was for you? Because you gave because it to I me. gave it to you. Well, 
I did give it to you and I did say it was your gift, but I meant it was for Allie. It was her gift. I gave it to you to give to Allie. still give it to her. Should we go give it to her now? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me go get my keys. All right. So you saw there in your bulletin, the spiritual gifts inventory, short film. We just saw that a method to help you discover your gifts for items which best describe you. So write that letter at the end of the line on the blank. It's easier than you think. I think if you look at the front of the page, you kind of get confused, but then you can turn it over and you can see on the back what that's all about. So I hope and pray that you'll look at your spiritual gifts test today and go ahead and fill that out. My wife will do all the deciphering and you can then talk with her and she'll tell you exactly where to fit in here at First Baptist Church Kids. Would you like to go to Pastor Pyre today? Would you like to go to Pastor Pyre today? Would you like to go to Pastor Pyre today? I'll tell you what, we're going to change up our schedule just a little bit. Stand together, if you will, while the kids go in 766 at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus is what we're going to sing to the tune of State Upon Jehovah. And we're going to have Brother Hale come and guide us as the Pastor Pirate kids Take off. You guys want to go? Go ahead. Sure, sure can. No problem at all. Right over on the other side of the social hall. All right, dear ones, let's go right ahead and we'll sing together. At the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess Him, King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure, we should call Him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty Word. Humbled for a season to receive a name From the lips of sinners unto whom he came Faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last Brought it back victorious when from death he passed. In your heart enthroned him, let, let him remove all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown him as your captain in temptation's hour. Let him heal and fold you in its light and power. Watch for this, Lord Jesus, shall return again with his Father's glory. For the day is coming when each knee shall bow, all our hearts confess Him, King of glory now. I keep looking for the chorus. <laughs> all right, have a seat if you will. I am extremely sorry. I was looking at this evening's schedule. <laughs> All right, hey, let's just go ahead, or I think I was. Was I looking at the right one? No, that is the right one, isn't it? Okay, all right, good. Anybody confused yet? Sure. Just you, Pastor, you're the only one. Okay, uh, scripture reading. Brother Hafer, why don't you come, Brother Dale? It's 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and 31, if you'd like to look. 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and 31. 
Well, I will say God's given me the ability to adapt, so yeah. it's, it's all I'm good. Glad for that. So if, that if we don't mind, here. if we can rise for respect for the Word of God. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorifieth let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Come forward, gentlemen, if you will. Brother Eddie Hall, why don't you come, my friend? Brother Hall, why don't you guide us in the offering time, if you will? Brother Jason Hastings, as I said. <laughs> I'm still looking at this evening, believe it. <laughs> Don't say anything about me. You just open yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we uh, take our offerings, um, isn't it comforting to know what kind of uh, stuff we have for our kids to do here? Amen. Yeah. Um, whether you know it or not, or realize it, them kids that just walked out of here in about probably 10 to 15 years from now, well, they're going to be leaders of this church hopefully and uh i've been grateful enough to see garrett alicia and emmanuel do that yeah um here yeah and uh pray for them kids over there pray for garrett as he gets ready to go out and what about another year yeah. next year 10 months so pray for them um it's 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 exciting, exciting. Scary, uh, but <laughs> the kids are our future, um, and and they're future leaders of the church. So, uh, my uh, plan was to get up here, and maybe crack a joke about our pastor, <laughs> but uh, even sitting back there, it's just, uh, it's just the Lord has a way of changing things. So, the Lord. let's uh, pray for our, our uh, offerings and uh, we just pray. You just pray what the Lord get, would have you give. Uh, Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the people in it. Um, we just pray that you would uh, bless the gift and the giver here. Uh, we, we pray for our kids. We pray for Garrett as he gets ready to go out. And uh, we, we also pray for Alicia as she gets ready to get married and, and Jesus. And, um, and we just pray for her services this morning. And... Um, We'll give you all the praise and glory in your name, amen. 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 Have a seat, dear ones, for a moment. Understand it better by and by. Brother Hale, why don't you come up here? Brother Mike, why don't you come up here as well? And anybody that will, grab just five or six or ten or twenty or thirty-five of those tracks. Hand them out to your friends and family in the area and let the Lord use you. There's also other kinds of tracks up here, the Breaking Chains tracks for the Reformers Unanimous Addictions Program. Make sure that you get a hold of one of those if you would like to hand out tracks. Understanding, again, that this is the time of the year that we're calling the All of the Above Evangelism Month. And this right here are Spanish tracks as well. Roger, ven no mas, amigo. Ven no mas. Roger. Why don't you hand these out, Roger, to anybody that wants two or three Spanish tracks as well? How many of you know Hispanics are a big part of our country and continuing to be? Hermano Roger, por favor, entregales a los que quieren, no? Just give those out, Roger, to anybody that you will. Entregales a nadie, a, a, a ellos, a ellos, a cualquier, no? Cualquier. Hay, hay algunos acá también. There's some over there. And so you go right ahead, my brother. Movement during the sermon. Listen close. In just a little while, Barb, I'd like to play All I Have is Christ, okay? 
All I have is Christ to give you another opportunity to stretch your legs. But while we're playing, all I have is Christ. I'd like for you, please, to use the restroom then, okay? Um, I got to tell you, I understand that some people can't do anything but use the restroom every 15, 20 minutes. If that's you, sort of sit towards the back so that you can get out easily. And during the sermon, we try our best just to stay put if we possibly can. So we'll sing this song in a moment, give you an opportunity to go if you need to use uh, facilities. Shut your cell phone off right now, if you will, and we'll get ready here and get ourselves strapped in in just a moment. The Millmans are going to be coming right now. They're going to be singing really soon. And so why don't you guys go ahead and get up there if you want to, and uh, we'll get you started. Remember, there's no food or drink in the auditorium. Platform prat dress. Just look at these guys. They all look so nice, don't they? Lead by example. They do. Lead by example. That's it. I didn't see you. I, you know, uh, my son has this... Um, he has this, um, when he goes out on his canoe, he's got one of those floaty things. What do you call it? Life, life jacket. He called it, it's, it's a Speedo life jacket. So he tells everybody he's always wearing his Speedos when he goes to the canoe, you know. Can I tell you something? We don't have Speedos on the platform, okay? <laughs> Try not to do that. We, we're, trying, <laughs> we're trying to have good platform dress. Are you the one that's kind of? <laughs> Some, to something to that dress. <laughs> Styling after going out and witnessing in restaurants and in other places, uh, folks are going to Federalsburg, others are going to up in the Bridgeville area. I don't mind at all that you do what you do by your own way and means. Understand also that if you want to encourage one another, of course the church is what it is so that we come together. And the same is true for evangelism. So come here once in a while and encourage your brothers as we all go together. Because certainly, if you're a really good evangelist, we want to pair you off with someone that might be new. And we want to make sure we have people to do that with. Tonight, Garrett is presenting God's plan for Milford. Millsboro. Millsboro, like I said. You, you could... You know. <laughs> I'm batting 150 is what it is, yeah. Okay, listen, guys, my wife is going with him, so be careful now to get behind him, all right? My daughter's going with him. <laughs> batting 200 now. <laughs> we will tonight have some good music, great time of fellowship, excellent time of giving that presentation. Also, listen, he's going he's gonna to preach, okay? And so come and enjoy that time and worship and times together. Amen. And just ignore me this morning. Tuesday, 4 o'clock visitation. Spiritual gifts, you saw that. The RU on Friday. Robin, cleaning teams in nursery. I'd like for you to talk with Miss Robin Fenstermaker about the cleaning teams. And we need more nursery personnel. Need more nursery personnel. I'm very glad to see you in the auditorium, Sue. Must mean somebody else is out there. Is Elaine in the auditorium? She's in all right. Good. Hey, we're doing better already. Good. Excellent. June 28th, vote on the sell of the farmland that we own in order to build our church building without debt. True word classes in session. We will set a date for a strong men, strong ladies meal. This is July the 27th, and I'm excited about that. That'll be very nice. July the 8th is Riverfest. July the 2nd. Listen, I'd like for you to sign up several and say, wow, okay, so those are on. Okay, uh, sign up for July the 2nd, if you will, okay? Grab a hold of that and just all throughout the auditorium, fill this out. You can bring airsoft guns for that night. You can bring food. You can bring fireworks, Several bring in several different things. Just hand that out throughout the auditorium when it gets to the back. Well, actually, uh, we've got two of them, so when it gets to the back, just keep it in the back. That's just fine. Don't worry a thing about it. New members in 2023. After the service today, there are some that need to receive the right hand of fellowship because that is something that is in our Constitution, the right thing to do. And uh, those that are just coming in this year, we want to make sure that we do that the right way. Okay? And so I'll talk to you later about who those are. I'll call them up, and we'll do that. 75th anniversary in July, first Wednesday in July, we are having a meeting and talking about some of the details for the 75th. Gentlemen, sing, won't you, dear ones? Thank you so much.
When your soul is lost in sin and you're at your journey's end, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? When you stray from the fold and there's trouble in your soul, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling Amen. you? Amen. That's good. Yeah. Calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? He will take you by the hand, lead you to that promised land. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? As you journey day by day and temptation comes your way, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? If you'll follow in his light, he will always guide you right. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? Amen, amen. Calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? He will take you by the hand, lead you to that promised land. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? When your soul is burdened down and your friends cannot be found, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? If you follow him each day, he will brighten up your way. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? Yes, yeah. amen. Calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. Can't Can you hear the blessed Savior calling you? He will take you by the hand, lead you to that promised land. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling? Billman Dyer, stand with me if you will. Sing All I Have is Christ as we get ready for this.
It's number 13. Christopher's going to tell you a silly, silly story. And uh, that's what church is all about, right? No. <laughs> but this will help you to set up listening to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Go ahead, buddy. So I talked to my wife before I came here, and uh, she did confirm that she was still with me with this. So um, this must have been not 15 years ago, but 12, 12 or 13 years ago. And, um, you know, I was, I was uh, a lot younger then, and I was looking for a job. So I went over to Food Lion that were having a job fair. This was in Harrington or Milford or something like that. I think it was Milford. And um, I went in, and I realized I didn't have my resume. So I went to the library to go print my resume, walked up the stairs, you know, went to go print that out. I went uh, somewhere, and I, and I forgot. I, I, I left something at the library. I don't remember what it was. I was very nervous at the time. So I went back to the library, and um, I noticed um, that they had uh, caution tape all over the stairs I had just walked. It was caution tape. There were security guards. that might even been a, a, a policeman or two. I, I wanted to know what was going on over there. So I asked the lady. She said somebody had vandalized the, the floor in the library. Um, well, you know, certainly enough, when I got back over to Food Lion, I was walking down the aisle, I noticed that uh, my shoes that my father had uh, about 20, 25 years ago, that he, he didn't hardly wear them. They were stored. You know, I thought they looked great, so I was wearing them. And I noticed that um, the, a large chunk of my heel, actually my entire heel, was gone, and it was all over the floor. It, was, it had liquidated <laughs> into this congealed clump of <laughs> melted rubber. And I noticed that the edges of my shoe were crumbling like a cookie all over the floor. You know, so what did I do? You know, I went in there anyway. And uh, then, you know, after the, uh, after the interview, I got a phone call uh, from, I think it was either the library or the police or something. They actually tracked me down through the cameras, found my phone number and called me and said, I don't want to press any charges here, but I just want to know what it was that destroyed this carpet so we can clean it. <laughs> I told them, I, at this point, um, I didn't know what it was, you know? I, I, actually, no, I, I, um, they called me bef right before I think the f I noticed it was the shoe. So I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I said, I, I have no idea. Um, and then, yeah, my shoes fell apart. So um, I, I, was, uh, I was in shock, and I told my father this. He had no idea that shoes could even do that. My wife was very, <laughs> <laughs> my wife was very surprised, so. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, wanted to share that, that my <laughs> shoes my shoes just fell apart. I don't know what happened. Um, I never, honestly, I don't know if they fixed the carpet in the library. All I don't right. know. I never went back. I moved to Seaford. <laughs> I didn't get the job. Uh, all right, let's have the invitation now. No. <laughs> oh, just hit the bottom, yeah. When I was a kid, I went through shoes like you wouldn't believe. You're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 18 says, For the preaching of the Christ, the preaching of the cross, is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew God, not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Listen now. But we preach Christ. Crucified under the Jews, a stumbling block, and under the Greeks, foolishness, but under them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised as God chosen yea and things which are not 
to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Remember those four things. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That according, yes, it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. My Father and King, I'm praying that you'll bless your word, not ours. I pray that the word of God, the word of the Christ would come alive. We do as Jesus did. He used parables. He used stories. He used illustrations to make points. And you told us that many other were the things that Jesus did that weren't written in the Gospels. But these are written that you might know. Now here's the deal, O precious King. We understand that in preaching there may be some things said. But Father, the meat of your word is only what we need today. Amen. And I'm asking that you'll use it in a special way, illustrated by things that perhaps you've decided you want. But Father, we're asking for your word to be glorified, for your son to be glorified, for us to understand what it means to glorify the word in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just like Brother Christopher when I was a kid, every couple months I had to get new shoes. I mean, I was one of those kids that destroyed things. You know what I mean? I was one of those kids that destroyed my clothes, destroyed everything. I'd go through a pair of pants in a day, you know? I see Brother Dave Van Pelt. He's going, mm-hmm, yep. That's how it is. I'd get that pair of shoes, and i just think it would last forever, and before long they were gone. Growing up, we really couldn't afford a pair of good shoes, you know what I mean? So we went and got the cheapo shoes. My brother had a pair of red and white Nikes. You guys remember these? Red and white leather Nikes. He wore those shoes all the time. You remember, I think they're pretty much the same thing, but those vinyl shoes that aren't leather, they stink quicker than the leather ones. You guys know how that goes, right? I can't even remember how we got them. But I remember Brian kept those red and white Nikes for years. And when I got older, I said to myself, I'm going to buy a really good pair of shoes. I'm going to buy a pair of shoes that actually last a little bit. And I went to one of those really high-end shoe stores. And I walked into that store, and I got the best pair of shoes I could. And in two months, they were gone. They were just destroyed. And I thought to myself, maybe it's the person wearing the shoes that is the problem. So when I get older, these things happen, and I thought, man, it's a real deal, and they're gone. I want you to get something today, just very simple. Shoes don't have to cost you to be the best. They just need to be the real deal. I want you to understand something. There are many false Christs in the world. There are Christs that will last you two months. There are Christs that will last you six months. But until you get the real deal, you're never going to have a Christ that will last you a lifetime. They just need a thorough exam, my friends. And the fact is, as you look at all the Christs in the world, we're going to need a thorough exam. It dawned on me that I hadn't thoroughly examined my shoes when I walked out of that store. And Christopher was telling me this morning the same story in our administration meeting. He said, Pastor, he said, I never looked at them shoes. I just throw them on my feet. They're 20 years old. They started falling apart the first time I wore them. I'm here to tell you that if you're trusting in a Jesus Christ, it may not be the accurate one. There is a Mormon Christ. There is a Jehovah's Witness Christ. In fact, I'm going to show you some of those today. Humans believe that we've been taught right from the very beginning. We believe our parents. We believe those that are around us. We believe authority. Listen to my, my friend. The only thing you can trust is the perfect Word of God. And Jesus Christ and His Word is clear on that. I remember a story about a young lady who every Thanksgiving time, would take her turkey and she'd cut the butt right off that turkey. She just took the bottom and went, woo, 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 cut the bottom off of that turkey. And one day one of her friends said, what are you doing that for? There's some meat on there. Why are you cutting the butt off a turkey? 
She said, because that's what you do. She said, what do you mean that's what you do? She said, go ask my mother. Her mother was sitting in the living room. She went in and she asked her mother. She said, why do we cut the bottom off a turkey? That's a good part. She said, that's what we do. She said, well, you, you have to. You have to. That's how it works. If you put that in there, you'll ruin the whole bird. Well, how do you know that? Well, I don't know. I, I just know that's what my mother did. So I went in the bedroom, and grandmother was in the bedroom. They said, why do we cut the bottom off a turkey? Some of our friends are wondering. I know it's right. I just need to know why you're doing it. She said, well, I'm telling you it's right. I know it's right. It's the only way that you can actually do Thanksgiving is cutting the bottom off. But she said, I couldn't tell you why. So they picked up the phone and called the old lady's old men's home, you know, where the folks retire. And, of course, great-grandmother was at the lady's men's home. They said, Grandmama, why is it that we cut the bottom off the turkey? She said, because I had a really small oven, she said. You can get to thinking things about Jesus Christ that aren't true because mom and dad said it. You can get to thinking things about Jesus Christ that aren't true because some of your best friends said it. You can get to thinking certain doctrines are in the Bible when they ain't even there and somebody said that it is. Documents, the Bible, we can start looking through and look and say, but people say that there's, it's in here, but it's not in there. We need to get back to what we're actually here to do. And that is to believe and understand and love the Christ. The real authentic Christ. There's nothing better in the world than the simple old fashioned word of God. There's no document, no thing, no government, no greatness of any kind. Our word, the word of God, the true truth of the old fashioned book. That's what you want. Bible examination is what is needed today. You and I want to be sure that we have the right Christ. I need a Bible examination today. How about you? You know what, my friends? Everyone says we all serve the same God. That's poppycock. This whole world is worshiping hundreds of gods. And just because we call him God doesn't mean he's God. Everyone says we all serve that same God. If you were Satan, wouldn't you do it that way? Yeah. Wouldn't you say, hey, let's kind of make it all look like, and then everybody's singing kumbaya. Let's worship the devil. Let's worship Satan and his demons. What's he called? Mau Mau? Oh, that's God. Let's just, what's he called? Uh, oh, the Islamists serve another one? Oh, he's just the same God. Oh, this sect over here, oh, the Jehovah's Witness, oh, they all just serve the same God. Turn to Matthew 24, if you will, in verse 23, and let's see what the truth of the Bible says. Hey, how many of you believe the Word of God? Matthew 23, Matthew 24, pardon me, verse 23, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there... Believe it not. No, this is Jesus. Well, I need some proof of that. I want to know for sure. I want to be confident that I can put my full faith and trust in this Christ that you're telling about. Verse 24 goes on. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and verse 24. Matthew 24 and verse 24. There shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Are you reading what I'm reading here? Why don't you read it out loud? You ready? For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Listen, if you're sitting in these pews and you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the authentic, true, and right Jesus Christ, the only maker of the universe, the Creator, by the way, John 1, 1 and 3, verse through verse 3, explains He's not just a man. He was the God, the only God, and He made the whole world. And if we're not believing that Christ, we're believing a false Christ. 
Verse 25 goes on. Matthew 24 and verse 25 then explains. Why don't you just keep going, honey, until verse 26. Behold, I have told you before. Verse 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. And then go on to verse 27, if you will. Go on to verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth into, even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I remember a story not long ago where in Texas, this guy walked into a church pretty much full, just like this. He walked down the aisle. He had the clothing of Jesus Christ on. And he's walking down the aisle like this. And his 12 apostles were behind him. And they were all dressed in robes that looked very much like Peter and Matthew and John. And, you know, they were all kind of marking their particular identification. And he got about halfway down the aisle. And the preacher had really good deacons like I've got in this church. Really good trustees. Really good leaders and ushers. And he just said, fellas, just like that. And those guys grabbed all 13 of them men and threw them right out in the street. I mean, threw them right out and right off the property. He said, you can do whatever you want out here, but don't you come back on this property. And some of the members foolishly said, well, what if he was the real Jesus? <laughs> I mean it. You've got to be as dumb as a stump. But anyway, they said that. You say, now, Pastor, how do you know it wasn't the real Jesus? Because he'd have been walking six inches off the ground. That's why my Bible tells me clearly that when he comes back, he's going to plant his feet on the Mount of Olives and that that mountain's going to split in two. And that'll be the first time he touches down on earth. So listen to me. If you know the doctrine, you know the words, you know the truth of the Bible, you're going to be all right. Otherwise, you're going to just believe any old fool that says, I'm Jesus, bow down to me. And don't you think it's bad to say fool either, because the Word of God calls that a fool as well. Anybody that wants to take Jesus' identity and make it their own, my Lord God, help us. You know what we all need? Why don't you say it with me? A Bible exam. You ready? A Bible exam. Oh, my friend. Let's study Jesus. Let's think about the authentic Christ. Go with me to 1 John chapter 4. And verse 1. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, if you will. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 John 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets, getting this here? Many false prophets are gone into the world. Somebody grab 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. Who can do it? As soon as you do, get your hand up. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. As soon as you got it, just slip your hand up real quick. Okay, go right ahead, Pastor. Read it out, won't you? 2 Corinthians 11:14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Go on to verse 15, if you will, Pastor Michael. Since you got it. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. Verse 16, go on from there. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me that I may boast myself a little. Now, Paul is explaining clearly who is Christ and who is not. And he's explaining that Satan, by his very nature, is constantly trying to fool us into believing that he's Jesus Christ. And how does he do that? <laughs> Don't believe me. Don't do it. Say, so, well, what am I here for? To read the Bible and understand it. 
has nothing to do with who's behind this pulpit. Tonight, Brother Garrett will be preaching. I'm telling you, Brother Garrett, myself, any number of preachers behind this pulpit mean nothing. The Word of God speaks the truth. And if it be that an individual will honestly take the Word of God without their personal interpretation and simply read that book, and understand the truth of it, you will come to the knowledge of who the real Jesus is. And oh, he'll love you. He'll he'll grab a hold of you. He'll greet you. He'll take you in. Listen, my friends, the Mormon Jesus is a demigod. He is the brother of Satan. You can look this up yourself if you like. Mormons will not confess that they believe that Jesus is the brother of Satan. But what they say instead is that Jesus Christ is a spirit baby, and that his spiritual birth coincided with the spiritual birth of the devil himself, and that they both came from the same father. What does that make them? My brethren, that is ridiculous. According to the Bible, Satan was an angel, and God in Christ is deity. He is God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word... Verse 14 tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ came as God. Jesus Christ in human flesh died on that old rugged cross and my Savior, my King, my Creator, Jehovah, Jireh, uh, you, you can call Him any number of names, but our King's characteristics are the same and always will be. And it won't be the Mormon Jesus and it won't be the Jehovah's Witness Jesus who is not God, only a perfect man, according to what they say. They reason through the Scriptures and listen to this. In 1985, the paragraph 307 says this, in what they consider to be holy writings they use what is called the new world translation and in their holy writings to explain the new world translations called the reasoning from the scriptures they say clearly jesus is not god he's only a perfect man that is what jehovah's witnesses believe and it is a lie And I'm here to tell you, my friends, when we get to a point where we start to understand that our minds are being engineered to a one world religious thought, you will understand that we are being fooled to believe that we ought to just get together with everybody and sing kumbaya and just get along, for goodness sake. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, my Christ and Savior, my Lord and God was a warrior and continues to be. And he tells us to fight the good fight. He tells us to put on the armor of the Lord. He tells us to fight like never before because in the end, your fighting is going to be into what? Probably not physical victory. You and I are going to jail. I'm telling you right now. We're going to end up in persecutive, persecutive things. Yes, there goes my tongue again. Anyhow persecutive manners but i'm telling you that my friends god will win in christ god will win and i glorify him for that don't get the wrong pair of shoes you put your feet in them things and going to stank Woo! something fierce and you might get a call from the library you never know If your Christ is not the Word of God, He is not a good shoe. If your Christ is not the Word from heaven that came down and His bread is broken for us so that we can eat and drink Him. I talk about physical eating and drinking. Of course, most certainly, He in that text, along with many other texts, called Himself a rock, called Himself water, called Himself all kinds of things. But our God and King meant that He wanted us to ingest Him to a point where He is ours and I am His. I am in Him and He is in me. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 makes it clear that any man that's in Christ is a new creature now what are his characteristics with this I close number one he is wisdom real wisdom not worldly wisdom but real wisdom somebody grab John 1 and verse 1 again read it out loud maybe we could just quote it in the beginning was the word and the word and the word verse 14 again you understood it you hear he came 
He became flesh. He dwelt among us. Psalm 33 and verse 6. Somebody grab it. Psalm 33 and verse 6. And then quote it out loud. Psalm 33 and verse 6. Somebody read it right off the screen. Travis, go ahead. Real loud, buddy. This is our God, our King, singularly our Christ. John chapter 14 and verse 8. What does the Bible tell us? Somebody read it. John 14 and verse 8. Go ahead if you will, somebody. You got it? Read it. Go on to verse 9. What is Jesus saying here? You're looking for the Father. You're staring at Him. Who do you think I am? My Jehovah's Witness friend. My Mormon friend. And I call you a Mormon friend. I call you a Jehovah's Witness friend. I call you a gay friend. I call you a homosexual friend. I call you a lesbian friend. I call you a transvestite friend. Friend! Jesus is the friend of sinners, the real Jesus, the real Christ, the real God of heaven. But he knows sin is killing us, and he's asking us to draw away from it. He's asking us to point it out in our own lives. He's asking for us to be convicted by him. And he's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, for my burden is easy and my yoke, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's all wisdom and he's all righteousness. Someone read 1 John 2, 29. 1 John 2 and verse 29. Go right ahead. I realize what I'm saying. Look up here. Look up here. Look up here, won't you? I know what I'm saying is not popular. I know that. If we somehow have the idea that Jesus was popular, we are worshiping the wrong Christ, the false Christ. He was not kumbaya popular. Ask any Pharisee, ask any Sadducee, ask any individual who hated what he was saying. They would say, oh, he's just too individualistic. He's just too direct. He's just too accurate. Oh, dear ones, why would we ever think that the God who designed this world wouldn't be accurate? Why would we ever get the idea that he wouldn't want to be specific about who he is? Oh, my friends. All that needs to happen now is for us to submit. Jesus, just come be the one. Not one of us, but the one. And there is a massive difference. (laughs) I heard this thing, and I've seen it on YouTube, and I wondered about it, and I looked into the background of it, and I started realizing what was going on is, it's from cultish background thinking. This idea of guys running around, they're looking all creepy and nutty, and they're saying, see, this is what Jesus came for. He gets us. I'm like, no, that's not what Jesus came for. What he came for is for people to get away from all that nonsense and sin and wickedness. I started looking in the background of that. He gets us stuff, because at first it looked pretty good to me, actually, because, man, he did come to get the worst of us. He did. But then I got to realizing, they're saying, you know why Jesus came? He came to put himself into sin. He came to make himself wicked. He came to put himself into such evil behaviors that now he can identify with us and he gets us. I'm here to tell you, my Jesus never sinned. Not one time. My Christ was perfect in every way, shape, and form. You want to call him a goody two-shoes? You go right ahead. That's the reason they put him on the cross. That's the reason I... Put him on the cross. Because I just thought he was just a little too good for me. Oh, you're going to go around calling yourself the perfect son of God. We're just going to put you on the cross. And they did. And he said, thank you. This is exactly what I wanted. 
and I made you do my will. And now I can save every human being on earth because you killed me. <laughs> this is Jesus. And then three days later, my God showed he's God by raising himself up from the dead. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. My friends, he reaches out to every human being on this earth and he says, I love you, son. I love you, daughter, in the sense that they are humans. But man, we ain't no sons and daughters of God until we give our hearts to Christ. Romans chapter 1 and verse 12 tells me I can be given the power to become the son of God. Why? Because I received the real, awesome, characteristically perfect son of God. He's also my sanctification. You know, the other day I went out in that tent with my son, or canoe, pardon me, with my son. There I go again. Good grief. What a day. Give me energy, Arlene. Help me out, baby. Oh, thank you. Anyway, Jesus can, right? <laughs> this canoe trip that I went on, I looked down the water, just kind of grabbed some of that water. I said, oh, look at that water. Oh, look at that water. Wow. It was disgusting. Horsey Pond, I think, has some horsies at the bottom of the pond or something. Because it's pretty disgusting stuff. And I realize at that moment, I don't want to drink this, but there is purified water in Christ that I would partake of. Real sanctification is that understanding. Somebody good, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23. Somebody read it out loud, if you will. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. You could read it right off the screen now. Somebody, go right ahead. Uh, have somebody else, Arlene, give them a turn. Go ahead, Brother Keith. Oh, pastor, you got that one wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to be arrogant or, or have problems with you, pastor, but you got that one wrong. Jesus came so that we could continue in sin. You know what I'm hearing an awful lot? Jesus came and sacrificed himself so I never have to sacrifice. <laughs> okay. You and I are getting set up to be killed, persecuted, yes. taken out. Yes. Every age that took place. You say, we're in a bastion of freedom. I agree. And it's disappearing day by day. Yes. And one of these days, you and I need to be ready to get our heads lopped off. And that's okay with me. I just don't like the pain. That's the only thing I'm... I, I want to go to heaven. I'm just scared of the pathway. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest with you. I'm worried. I tell you what, my dog scratched me on the leg the other day, and I went, oh. I'm thinking to myself, how am I ever going to get chained up in a prison somewhere? Oh, Hebrews 10 and verse 10. If you, I'm just being honest with you. Hebrews 10 and verse 10. What does the Word of God say? Read it with me. Somebody find it. Hebrews 10 and verse 10. What does the Bible say? Go ahead. Read it. You and I both got bit by the same enunciation bug, didn't we? This morning, we're having trouble. In Massachusetts, I had a friend from work who was a quote-unquote Christian. He told me, he said, Oh, you know, the difference between y'all Baptists and us Lutherans is that we're allowed to sin. <laughs> you know, my friends, he had it wrong. <laughs> Ain't none of us that can keep from sinning, okay? Every single one of us are sinners. And the goal for us is to allow Christ to do the living so the thin sinning stops. Amen. You see, when we die and Christ takes over the vessel, then I'm telling you what, your batting averages go way up. <laughs> what is the best batting average you've ever heard of? 500? Really? I never knew anybody got that high. Is 300 pretty good? 400? 300, right by 300? Listen, do you realize that the goal is 1,000? How many of you know? <laughs> the batting average goal is 1,000. 
So if you and I hit 300, we're doing all right. Get this, my friends. You're not perfect and won't be. But the Holy Spirit of God, when he gets a hold of you and starts working on you, your batting average will go up from 80 to 300 faster than you can think. And it may go past 300. But you won't know it because you won't be thinking about it, right? We as true believers believe in humility to a point where we say that was Christ, 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 that was God, that was the Savior, that was the King. God did it again. He praised His name again. He did a great work. Oh, God, thank you. You filled the auditorium again. Oh, precious King, look at those cars out there. Look at those souls that are being saved. Oh, God, none of us could do that. Look at Romans 5 and verse 17. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. He not only gives wisdom, He not only gives righteousness, He he not only gives sanctification, which is holiness, but he also gives redemption. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more, they which received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. The characteristics of my Savior are that he is my Redeemer. Galatians 3 and verse 13 affirms this. Titus chapter 2 and verse 14. But Galatians 3 and verse 13 is the one we'll end with. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You say, Pastor, I thought you said he came not to sin. He didn't. But your sin is on him. My sin is on him. When I think of Jesus' death, it burns me because I think all that junk I've ever done, he took it. He took it and put it on himself and he bled his blood for me and it's embarrassing. It's awful. My, my friend, Brother Witzel, just had a baby. How many of you know that? The first man that's ever had a baby. I'm just kidding. That's another sick old problem going on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway, Rosny just had a baby, and L was eight pounds, two ounces. And Brother Winsell came to church on Wednesday. He wasn't going to stop, man. He just comes and comes and comes. And it was just then that they had the child. They were working through it, I guess, Wednesday morning, Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. 22nd, okay, whatever. Anyway, this child's born in the world. David's mind is in a different place. He's talking to me. We're excited. He's like, man, I got to go. You know, I want to make sure I get out, see after service. He runs out. <laughs> he runs out of service and gets right into my, somebody else's car. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was funny because we were out evangelizing. Uh, a few months ago, we were at Food Line parking lot, and my wife got into a car with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done. <laughs> they open up the door. Oh, hello there, sir. <laughs> That's not my car, is it? <laughs> Can I tell you something, my friends? You get into the wrong Christ, and you're going to be in serious trouble. Yeah. And don't you think for a second, when the Word of God says there are many antichrists in the world, that somehow Jesus got it wrong when he said those things. He said it. He said that. No, I will not sing Kumbaya with false teachers. Would you bow your head and close your eyes and think for just a second. We're in trouble. And the truth is becoming ostracized in our society. Those around us are getting the idea that we're just going to succumb to them. We're going to bow the knee and we're all going to get together and we're all going to have a one world religious system and I'm here to tell you I just won't be a part of it I would hope that you won't either the word tells us in revelation that in the end times the false prophet will rise up and everyone will get on board I plan to be gone by then in the rapture myself but my friends I can tell you of a surety that all of those things are already happening. Because the Bible says that the spirit of Antichrist is already among us. And he is trying to unite groups. That's why they're stopping 
calling themselves Baptists and other denominations. They no longer want an identification. We're just the community church. We're just the rock church. We're just the, well, before long, the church will be gone too. Because as you take away your identity, you take away the truth. When you take away definitions, you take away who you really are. When a person can't look up a doctrinal statement anymore because they don't know what you are, my friends, they start to meld with every sect there is on earth. And I am here to tell you it's vulgar, it's vile, it's wicked, and I hate it. I hate it that people won't even put up a website where you can look at the doctrine and they can know, oh, well, this church believes the truth. This church believes the Bible. This church believes the honest-to-God Christ, the true character Christ, and yet that's all being taken away. If you're here this morning, you'd say, oh, pastor, I'm concerned. I really am because I thought it was a good thing for us all to be united and one and My friends, if we love the world and the things that are in the world, Jesus says, you are my enemy. That's what he said. But those are religious things. So were the Pharisees. So were the scribes. So were the Greek religious leaders. Every religion in the world is against the truth. You say, well, who's right? Well, not me. Get into the word of God. Find the truth in this. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him, the true Him, shall not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. The interesting thing is God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Say, Pastor, it sounded so strong this morning. Well, it's not condemnation. It's warning. And there is a massive difference. I'm not here to condemn. I'm here to tell you so that you don't get in trouble. I love you. I love you. You love your children? Look up here for a second. Look up here. Do we love our children? Do we love our children? What do we do constantly with them? Warn them. <laughs> don't go in the street. I want you to be a green spot. <laughs> you know? I love you too much not to tell you. Stay away from there. You might even give me a little, stay away. I'd rather you felt that much pain than that much pain. You know, so I'm going to give you a little pain so you ain't feeling the big pain. You know what I mean? And that's Proverbs. The scripture teaches that. But here, listen. Do you need a little swat today? Did you get it? Did you get a nice little swat today? Are we all thinking straight on this? Why don't you stand with me? If you need to get before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I got this idea in my head of the kumbaya nature of the world. And I, don't, I don't need all that. I just need Christ. I need the real Christ. I need the honest, authentic Christ. If that's you and you need to come, why don't you come? How about you who want to pray for the world situation? I just saw the gay pride stuff in Salisbury. My heart broke to pieces. I thought to myself, how could they just allow this vulgarity? God help us as a nation. But it's getting worse and worse and worse. How many of you think we need to pray for our nation? Why don't you come and get on your knees and pray for the United States of America? Or if you need to join this church, why don't you come? I'd love to have you. Come join this church if you need to this morning. Go to him 495 if you will. Remember that this authentic Christ cares about you. He loves you. He wants you. He He embraces you. He draws you in. Him 495. Jesus loves even me. Okay? Why don't you come? Several. My goodness. The altars are filled. Why don't you come and be a part of this movement? Be a part of this movement. Get on your face. Talk to God. Talk to God right now. Allow the Spirit of God to get inside of you and work on you. Won't you do that even now? I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. 
this is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. If you're here this morning and you hear your name, you should come and receive the right hand of fellowship. Uh, Charles Short, Rosemary Hart, Cliff Hopkins, I know that they have sickness in their family. Dana does as well, James. Toy Jones, just from this year, come. Sandy Rice, Hasmina, Jasmine, uh, Morris and Carol, if you will. Deshaun Lawson, Roger Gillian. Martin Gillian, hermano Rocha, ven nomás, hermano, por favor. Martín, ven nomás, if, eh, si se puede. Isaac's not back yet, but this is still a 2023. Michaela Collins, Clay Chaffinch, Christopher and Luca, and uh, Krista, why don't you come up here? David and Cassidy, Bryant, Van Pelt, come on up, the three of you, if you will. Uh, Janetta Morris, if you're back there, I can't always see who's in the overflow. Come on up and just come all the way across, if you will, all the way across the other side. 